After realizing he had been deceived, Lincoln became furious and smashed the plank to pieces. Michael had no choice but to call the National Security Agency to find out who this Don really was. However, Don was the first to file a complaint against Herb, claiming he had fallen into a trap and that Trishan had been killed by Michael. Then, he called out Lincoln's name, pretending that he too had been silenced. This way, both Trishan and Don's lives were blamed on Michael and Lincoln, allowing him to disappear and sell Scylla. Teabag watched nervously, but Don didn't plan to kill him just yet. He needs to bag's help finding Gretchen who can contact the buyer. All his life was angry at being made to lose face by a few of them. He went down to the other cardholders about what to do, but losing Scylla completely destroyed, there's no more prestige. Scootery mocked him openly for trying to transfer Scylla, and a general tried to salvage his dignity by asking Scooteri to leave. But Scootery was aggressive, forcing him to admit his mistakes quickly. The general pulled out a gun and shot him. Take back Scootery's Scylla card. Everyone present was silenced by the scene. Then, the general declared that they needed to find Scylla as soon as possible. Lisa lost all motivation to work. She couldn't believe her father had taken a life so easily. Sucre suspected that Don might not be from the National Security Agency. But Mahoney confirmed his identity because Don provided them with guns and arranged transportation. Mahoney said that Michael asked him to use government resources to find Sarah, but Don claimed he couldn't do it. He wouldn't save him even if he was caught. In reality, he just didn't want more people to know about their existence. This covert operation was to conveniently get rid of them. Mahoney speculated that Don had probably already arranged for the National Security Agency to capture them. To avoid any mistakes, Michael removed the parts from Scylla. Michael searched and thought the ceiling in the restroom was a good hiding place. But then, his condition suddenly worsened. Seeing his brother in distress, Lincoln was extremely worried and knew they had to perform surgery immediately. However, their priority now was to leave the headquarters as soon as possible. But shortly after they left, Herb showed up. Now it was confirmed that Don had severed all ties. Herb's words confirmed this. According to Michael's understanding, not only had Don taken Scylla, but he had also cruelly killed two agents. Herb urged them to surrender quickly, or else he would chase them to the ends of the earth. In the hotel, Lincoln couldn't understand why he was constantly framed. When the agents from the National Security Agency arrived, he wanted to confront them. Michael advised him to stay calm, as there was still room for maneuver. As long as they could expose Don and prove that he took the Scylla, the deal with the government would still be valid. They couldn't escape now, no matter what. Now the company must be brought down. Suddenly, the TV broadcasted the news of Teabag and Gretchen being wanted. Looks like they're not the only ones down on their luck. Inspired by this, Michael found a breakthrough. Don wanted to sell the Scylla and would definitely go to Gretchen. He quickly made a plan and asked Lincoln to find a public phone. After Sarah injected him with a nerve suppressant, told him to leave Don alone and go to Mexico to get the surgery done. Michael refused because he wanted to put an end to all of this. Bag sees that he won't die for a while, started bragging again. Don didn't bother with him and asked if the address of Gretchen's house was reliable. And this is the address where Trishan took Gretchen's fingerprints and found them, which Dag says is absolutely reliable. Don only wanted to hear that, warning Dag that if he said one more word, he would kill him. Bag wisely shut his mouth. The first call Gretchen got was from Lincoln, said Don took Scylla. They arranged to meet, and she promised to cooperate in finding him. Rita called her, saying that Don had come to the house and asked her to come back. Lincoln's side was discussing whether Gretchen could be trusted. The news reported that she was holding a gun in the office, clearly waiting for them to leave so she could steal the Scylla. But now they needed Gretchen to find Don so they had to trust her once again. The general didn't waste any time and investigated Don thoroughly. He found out that Don's superior was Herb and even tracked Gretchen's whereabouts through surveillance. Herb and the congressman suggested a secret operation. Herb stated that it wasn't a bad idea. A secret operation meant that no one would know if they backed out. However, before they could implement the plan, the federal marshals arrived for backup. It turned out they were investigating Michael's case, and now they could be used as laborers. At that moment, Michael arrived at the agreed location with Gretchen on the street. A group of people were nearby to protect them. However, Gretchen couldn't go over now. Don was pointing a gun at Rita's head, ordering her to find a new buyer for him. When he picked up the phone, 
He saw that there were call records with Lincoln on it. He thought both sides were connected through him, but he didn't expect them to have contact privately as well. Don wanted to know where those people were, but Gretchen said she didn't know. Unable to do anything, Gretchen had to tell him the meeting location for the safety of her daughter. Don asked Teabag to contact the National Security Agency to capture them. Michael didn't wait for Gretchen and asked Herb if the agreement still counted if they caught Don. But before he could get an answer, the people who were after him appeared, and Michael ran away. Unfortunate Lincoln, once again, got caught trying to protect his brother. When brought back to their base, Lincoln was furious. He questioned why they gave up their long-desired freedom to harm Don and claimed it was all a trap set by him. Herb agreed with this reasoning. Michael, also angry, called Gretchen to settle the score. Gretchen claimed it wasn't her this time. Don answered the call. He advised Michael to escape quickly. Michael thought it was too early for him to say that, said they would see. Don still didn't know that his Scylla was missing a component, and he asked Gretchen for information on buyers. Gretchen said there were no more than five people in the world willing to buy Scylla, and she only knew this one middleman. Don told Teabag to stay and guard Rita and Emily. While he prepared to leave with Gretchen, Rita slapped Gretchen and asked why Emily got involved. Gretchen could only assure her that she would handle it. In the car, Gretchen analyzed Don's behavior. Don glanced at her, took out his phone, and instructed Teabag to aim at Rita and shoot. He told her to stop talking and quickly arrange the deal. Fortunately, the middleman sent the time and location, which made Don stop the threat. Lincoln's scolding made Herb and Congressman suspicious. Upon investigation, Don indeed had a problem. They recovered the data Don deleted and found out that he had already prepared a fake identity and a plane ticket for tomorrow. It was obvious he wanted to sell Scylla and run away. The congressman discussed with Lincoln that as long as he and his companions could provide evidence against Don, the agreement would still be valid. But if they refused, they would have to wait for death in prison. Then, Michael received a call from Lincoln, but he heard the congressman asking them to gather everyone. Michael was already wary of such words. He gave Sukri the meeting location with the congressman and asked him and Sarah to wait nearby. He and Mahoney would go to the base to check the situation and, if everything was fine, they would go together to meet them. Sarah felt helpless as Michael completely disregarded his own well-being. When Sukri and Sarah arrived at the designated location, they found it to be a parking lot. Mahoney, who was supposed to be with Michael, also showed up. It turned out that Michael wanted to handle the issue himself and their task was to leave to prevent any unexpected situations. Michael met with the congressman at their agreed location, which was the base, and revealed all of the evidence. Herb and the congressman were genuinely surprised that Don had betrayed them. However, this created a serious problem. Herb suggested killing him, as nobody would know. The congressman agreed with this proposal more than going to prison. Herb went back to Michael and demanded the people, stating that without them, there would be no agreement. But Michael had already seen through everything and claimed that there was no real agreement. Herb hoped for another solution, but his own career was more important. Since Michael wasn't cooperating, he decided to eliminate the two brothers first. Unfortunately, he brought a mole with him. Before he could even fire his gun, the reinforcements from the French police special forces had already shot him dead. The so-called reinforcements were actually people specially sent by the general for investigation. But the traitor didn't have much time to be proud because Sukri suddenly appeared and took him out. It turns out that Sarah and Sukri didn't trust Michael at all, so they came back. The senator quickly made a statement to save his life. He said that nobody knows about this matter now, and the bag contains the remaining documents from this operation. As long as it's taken care of, everything will be as if it never happened. He just hopes he won't get shot when he leaves. This is not the outcome Michael and the others wanted. But the senator said he tried his best and he is really sorry. Lincoln wanted to shoot, but Michael stopped him. Lincoln is confused and doesn't know what to do next. Michael remains silent. On the other side, Don has already made contact with the middleman. The middleman is interested in going against the general, so he takes Scylla and prepares to test it. Don is happy in his heart, but he was happy too soon, as the middleman checks it and then hands it back to him. He says it's not complete yet and to come back when it's fully assembled for the trade. Don looks at the missing parts in confusion. Soon, Michael receives a call from him saying that Michael took something of his. Michael was quick to admit it. Let him come and get it if he wants it. Because he has to meet with Don, Michael has to psych himself up. 
he can only rely on nerve suppressants to maintain normal functioning. Lincoln was making his rounds at base camp when he suddenly realized that the paper used to jam the door had fallen off. Looking at the unfamiliar car in the distance, it seems that someone has arrived. When Michael was making arrangements to meet Don, Don made the first move. He never intended to have a face-to-face -face conversation with Michael and instead threw a gas bomb into the warehouse. He said either hand over the parts or be shot by him. Michael wouldn't give in to him, repeating that if he had the guts, he should come and take it himself. Now, the warehouse is filled with smoke, and if they continue like this, they will soon suffocate. Michael tells everyone to stay low and wait for the smoke to rise. But while he was concentrating, Lincoln's gun came up. Then he was punched and knocked out. Don was captured and questioned, while Sukri took the opportunity to slip away with a piece of wood. However, Don was not completely at a disadvantage because he also brought Gretchen with him. Now everyone is at gunpoint. He suggests that they should talk and resolve the situation peacefully. He says that they won't get a penny by handing Scylla over to the government. The buyer he found can not only bring the company down, but also make a lot of money. This buyer is a former employee of the company. Lincoln is tempted and asks for Michael's opinion. Michael suggests meeting the buyer first. Don says he will arrange it. Both sides temporarily reach an agreement, but it is only a temporary truce. Michael doesn't plan to cooperate with him because he has already sent Mahoney to establish connections with the government. As long as they can get their hands on the main part of Scylla from Don and move it to the company in exchange for freedom or hold their ground. Lincoln thinks the cooperating party Don mentioned sounds good, but Michael sees it clearly. It's just another company. What they want is to dismantle the company. Although Lincoln doesn't agree, he will listen to his brother. At this moment, Sukur receives a text message saying he is in position. During the previous standoff, he hid in Don's car as Michael instructed him to find out the location. Don has Gretchen open the computer, and the screen shows real-time footage of the headquarters. It turns out that the assembled gas bomb actually had a surveillance camera installed. Now Michael's condition is deteriorating, and even increasing Sarah's medication doesn't help. Michael throws the medication into the bag, completely disregarding his own life. He wants to act together with Lincoln. Lincoln doesn't say anything, and Michael feels helpless. But this time, Sarah doesn't fight him because Michael's determination may cost him his life. On the other side, Teabag is still monitoring Rita and Emily. Rita pleads with him not to harm the child. Teabag believes he still has limits and asks her if she thinks he looks like a beast. Ever since he abandoned his disguise, Teabag has become a bit unhinged. He takes out Cole's business card and starts reminiscing, saying that he was also forced into being a criminal. He reluctantly accepts that he has to continue being this criminal. Meanwhile, Don has arrived at the location. He opens the trunk, but there is no one inside. That's why Sucre took that board. He used it to create a barrier, forcing the car to create a virtual space for him. After getting out of the car, Sucre realizes that he is in a hotel parking lot. Then he takes the remaining gas bomb from Don. Lincoln tells Michael that Sucre has found a place to act, but just as they are about to leave, Michael stops him. No matter the outcome, he won't regret it. Lincoln understands that Michael has increased the dosage of medication after he left, but his actions are destined to be difficult. Because Don saw him hiding the parts in the ceiling of the restroom, he immediately instructs Gretchen to contact the middleman. Gretchen requests to talk to her daughter first. Emily looks at Teabag and says there's a bad person in the room. Gretchen shows a pained expression and tells her daughter not to worry, that the bad person will eventually disappear. Don doesn't want to witness their mother, daughter affection and takes the phone, instructing Emily to give it to the bad person. Then he gives the order that if he doesn't receive his message in two hours, they should kill both of them. Teabag doesn't know what to do, but he quickly regains his composure because someone rings the doorbell. Teabag holds Rita hostage and opens the door only to find a person selling Bibles to raise money for charity. He asks Teabag to spare five minutes for God to listen to him. Teabag isn't interested in God, but as soon as he sees the man's ring, he suddenly has time. Teabag thinks this man is from the company, while Rita feels that he is acting strange. He still has his identification and prayer card. But Teabag doesn't listen and keeps talking about his honorary ring. Ralph is scared and starts crying saying that the ring was left to him by his deceased brother. Teabag hesitates. Meanwhile, the general and his team are still struggling to find Scylla. J. 
General analyzed that Gretchen won't be with Michael. Let them search for Don Gretchen together. Since Lisa witnessed him killing Scootery, she couldn't bear it anymore and handed in her resignation to the general, saying he is not fit to be a leader. The general couldn't tolerate his daughter's opinion of him, and he said something heartless, saying he wanted a son. Lisa tried to control her emotions and walked away without looking back. His men found Gretchen and Don's whereabouts. The general immediately sent people to the hotel and issued a kill order. Mahoney met with his female assistant and said he was trying to bring down the company but was deceived by a person from the National Security Agency. He asked Felicia if there was anyone in the FBI she could trust. Felicia's answer saddened him. It used to be. Mahoney knew he had lost Felicia's trust, but he was now really fighting for noble ideals and personal freedom. Felicia saw him in such a miserable state and remembered someone. Mark who had a hobby of collecting all of Mahoney's criminal activities. He was not only a candidate for deputy director, but also an informant for the attorney general. Mahoney said, if he could get Skilla and bring down the company, wouldn't he be the deputy director? Mark agreed with this idea and didn't hide it. If Mahoney could give him accurate information, he would personally go to the attorney general to exchange for their freedom. As soon as this was said, Mahoney immediately called Michael, hoping to get Scylla as soon as possible. Michael said he had already met with Sucre and took the gas bomb. Looking at the pipes in front of him, he had an idea. He asked Sucre to buy some hairspray and a lighter. He wanted to make a homemade launcher. Sarah and Sucre started to act. After getting the room number from the greedy boss with money, they estimated the location and reported it to Michael. Michael observed for a moment, then handed the gas bomb to Lincoln. He went to the rooftop of the opposite building. Lincoln took the materials and made a crude launcher. When Michael tampered with the escape ladder, his nose started bleeding again. But he couldn't care about that for now. 